Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Church Online. We're happy that you're tuning in today. Okay, let's get into this. It's the weekly church news. I want to remind you that you can use the online bulletin to follow along with the 8 a.m. service. And for any of the worship services, please let us know that you've joined us today using the online connection card. And we want to be praying with you and echoing your praises. Please use the online form to share your prayer requests and your praise reports with us. You'll also find links to Sunday School Online and online mobile-friendly giving. Our next Meet St. John's is on March 1st. Today, we are celebrating and welcoming over 60 new members. If you're interested in taking your next steps here at church, join us for Meet St. John's, which is your first step toward church membership. Our next session is coming up on Monday, March 1st at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please RSVP online. Visit stjohnsorange.org slash next steps. The next session of LifeLight begins soon. Whether you've attended LifeLight Bible study before or not, all are welcome to join the next session. It's a study of the Gospel of Mark. LifeLight combines individual preparation with a theological presentation and group discussion and meets on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Please RSVP online. Visit stjohnsorange.org slash LifeLight. St. John's Family Ministry has so much going on. Don't miss out on the February Family Faith Kit or the Junior High Trivia Night. There are high school small groups continuing and there's spring seedlings and spring story time for the very, very young ones. Please visit stjohnsorange.org families to get connected to all the family ministry opportunities, events, and groups. Well, thanks for joining us. Please lean in today and be encouraged by the Word of God. I pray that today's worship experience fills you with the joy of the Lord. And join us next week. Our Turn the Page message series continues. We'll be reminded of the power and majesty of God and the healing power of Jesus. You don't want to miss it. Have a great week, church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart, in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name.
Join me as together we confess our sins and hear God's word of forgiveness. Dear Lord, we confess our failure to live as your children. Forgive, Forgive us, O Lord, Lord, for what, what we have done, done and what we have, we have left undone. undone. For our shallow thankfulness, our half-hearted public worship, and our irregular private prayer, Forgive us, us, O Lord. Lord. For our lack of regular study of your word, for our failure to use your abundant gifts in the service of our neighbor, Forgive forgive us, O Lord. For our lack of allegiance to you, O Lord and King, and for our failure to always live as heirs of the heavenly kingdom. Forgive us, O Lord. God hears our cries for forgiveness, and for Jesus' sake, he forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives us the power to become what he has called us to be, the children of God. And he bestows on us his Holy Spirit and empowers us through his grace to live a forgiven life. Rejoice together in the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Testament lesson from Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning at the 15th verse. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see his great fire anymore, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name, anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.
Gospel from Mark chapter 1, beginning the 21st verse. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority and not the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our assembled hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Who makes the big decisions? Who's in charge? Who commands the room? When something needs to be said in your family or your place of employment, who speaks up? When a decision needs to be made, to whom do people look? To a degree, for sure, it depends on the weight of the decision. There's some decisions that come rather easily. If the light switch for fuel comes on the dashboard of your car, you make the decision to go get gas. But But if you hear a clunk under the hood or something going on in the car that you don't know about, who makes that decision? And who decides the big issues of of your life? What you do, where you live, or even deeper into the soul, how you think, how you feel, and who you are. 
Perhaps maybe you're collaborative and you like to sit and visit and talk about those kinds of things. Well, we should do this. We should think that. This is how we're going to operate together. Or maybe you come from an autocratic system and one person says, this is the way it's going to be. I decide these sorts of questions. In our text today from Mark chapter 1, Mark gets immediately into the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's unfolding, it's moving, it's shaking, it's moving quickly. There's no angels, no shepherds, no Mary, no Joseph, no stable, no manger. So when you read the gospel of Mark, you put away your Christmas things rather quickly because Mark is driving towards something else. And Jesus is driving towards something else. And Jesus won't stop and Mark won't stop describing until Jesus gets to that finish line and the whole gospel narrative, the whole story of Mark's gospel ends at its appointed finish, as does Jesus. Who's in charge? Who makes the decisions? Who has authority in your life? Who has authority over our lives? Wear your mask. Well, Who says so? And why do they say so? And how do they have authority to tell me what to do? Social distance and stay away. Quarantine and isolate. Close your business, close your restaurant, close your church. By whose authority? Who says? Get a vaccine. It's all fine. Who says? By whose authority? Who makes those calls? And by what authority do we make those decisions in in our lives? Typically what we tend to do in 21st century America is is go to the internet. We take our phones, we take our iPads, we take our computers, we, we search and search and search, we read and sort and figure out loads and loads of digital or printed content. And we work it through our own minds and our own hearts, trying to figure out the the greater authority, sometimes defined by who has the greatest web hits or maybe even more, who do I agree with? So much content and so little authority. Some will say, well, science says, and so I'll do what science says. Some will say, my doctor says, and I trust my doctor, so I'll go in this direction. Some say, well, the government says, and if the government says it, it's got to be right. So I'll go that direction. And then asked by someone about why we do what we did or why we're fixing to do what we're fixing to do, we point to the authority and we say, I'm doing it based on what, what that person or that group of people say. But what about, what about your life? By what authority do you live? By what authority do you do what you do, think what you think, feel what you feel? At the bottom line, at the foundational piece of your life, what drives your decision-making process? What drives your goodwill about yourself? In our text today, and And throughout the first chapter of Mark's gospel, Jesus is is establishing his own authority. He's getting after it. He doesn't have a need for all sorts of fancy language and all sorts of flowery philosophical stuff. Mark is immediately getting after the story of Jesus. In the first chapter alone, Jesus has the authority to call disciples, authority over evil spirits as in our text. He teaches as one with authority. He has authority over disease. He has authority over the dreaded disease of leprosy. And he has the authority to restore people into community. He goes and goes and goes and he does and does and does and he doesn't concede his authority throughout the whole gospel of Mark. As a matter of fact, every step he makes in the gospel of Mark, Jesus establishes his authority to a greater and greater degree. Jesus is the man in Mark's gospel and authority is vested in him. One of the things that's been exhausting over the last months has has been the source of authority continues to change. 
in our own school, trying to, to keep the school open, to pivot, to think about who needs what and what the process will be, and masks and distancing, and what happens when someone tests positive or a loved one of someone tests positive. We, we continue to go back to the county, to the state, to the CDC, and try to figure out by what authority do we go. And our problems come when the authorities don't align, or even more when the authorities say, well, upon further review, we're changing what we've done. Earthly authority rooted in human knowledge, human wisdom, and human power seems to ebb and flow with the tides of human reason and human thinking and human expediency. And it becomes so overwhelming and exhausting to continue to make decisions in an ever-changing world. But the authority of Jesus does not shift with the expediency of humanity. Throughout the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, it's Jesus who comes in and takes charge. It's Jesus who comes in and, and says what needs to be said, who casts out an evil spirit, who heals the leper. It's Jesus who's in charge. It's Jesus who's the authority. And as the authority in things great and small, he doesn't give up that authority and say, well, I'll let this decision go to somebody else. He's the one who's driving He's driving with his authority all the way, well, all the way to Mark chapter 16, verse 39. After the trial, the agony, the crucifixion of Jesus, all the painful pieces of, of Dark Friday, of Good Friday, finally the first time Jesus is acclaimed as the Son of God is found in Mark chapter 16, verse 39. After the whole case has been built, after all of his authority has been tested and been verified, finally this word of affirmation. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Surely this man, this Jesus, was the Son of God. Who says that you have peace with God? By what authority is, is that said? Well, Jesus says that. And Jesus puts his authority forward and says, you belong to God. God is close to you. And here's how I know and here's how I have my authority. Because of my death on the cross... That death sealed my authority to bring you to my Father. My death, my sacrifice, Jesus says, brings you forgiveness and wins grace for you. By his death, he brings for us peace with God. And that peace doesn't change. And that authority doesn't change. We can't unkill or de-resurrect Jesus. He did what he did and his authority stands as it stands. When forgiveness of sins is declared in the name of Jesus, it's done with his authority. Not a changing, evolving, or changing and devolving word. Not an authority that is subject to the ups and downs of disease and the ebbs and flows of politics. Because he gave his life on the cross, Jesus, the Son of God, works and acts by his own authority to bring God close to you, to bring you God's grace through faith in Jesus, to forgive sins, and to grant us peace. A peace that looks at the gnawing conversation of guilt on a human soul and says, in the authority, by the authority of Jesus, hush. The gnawing shame that sin produces, that illness produces, that isolation produces, that evil produces. Jesus looks at that shame in our lives today 
and by his authority covers it over and reminds us that the last word of God and his authority is his word of love from Calvary's cross for you and me and all of us who wear the name Jesus. By whose authority then are we saved? When we stand before the heavenly throne, when our Lord calls us to heaven, and the Lord himself looks down and says, by what authority should I let you beyond these gates? By what authority do you stand here before me? And we point to that cross as the centurion did. And we say, I'm here with Jesus. I'm not here on my own. If I were here on my own, I'd be in trouble. I'm here because of the authority of Jesus. And like that centurion, we point to the cross. And we say, I'm here with your son. And by his authority, heaven's door swings open. For me, I've been baptized into Christ. And by the authority of Jesus, we are invited inside. Rock solid, never changing, never going away, never pivoting toward or away. Solidly, solidly on the authority of Christ. And in the meantime, between that last day and the last day of January 2021, we stand in the authority of Jesus Christ. And his authority drives a transcendent sense of peace for you and me. As the world pivots and moves here and there and decisions are made and decisions are rescinded as this person says this and that person says that and none of it seems to make a, 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 a complete and total amount of sense. Yet for Christians, for those of us who live and breathe and have our being right here and right now, we live by the authority of Christ. We live by the authority of the Him who has had everything put under His feet. And with the Lord firmly in control of all that goes on in his created world. Wanting the best for all of his people, for whom he has died and for whom he has risen again. We have a profound sense of confidence and peace in the Lord's working in the world right now. Marvelous promise of God for us that we do not live in a completely chaotic, non-directed, authorityless world. But as Christians, we're called to see more, see better, see deeper, see farther, and to let our hope fill how we look into the future. And with that, those words of Paul from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, something you may want to look up this week and think about. The words of where final authority rests. And final authority resting here allows there to be rest in your soul. Paul writes, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Rock, solid, not changing, authority of Jesus, and you, you are loved. In the name of Jesus, amen. I ask that you join me, join me wherever you are this morning uh, as we confess the Christian faith using this morning the words of the Apostles' Creed. They will be on the screen before you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of heaven and earth, we are truly thankful for all your many blessings. We are grateful that you care for us, that you know each of us, what we need, and, and that you make provision for each of us. We thank you for sending Jesus into our evil world to save us from our sins and the result of our sins. And we are blessed that you have graciously invited us to bring our prayers, petitions, and praises directly to you. Therefore, we now humbly ask that you would hear us as we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are thankful for the hopeful signs that we now see in the midst of this pandemic. We see hospital cases and ICU cases declining. We see the vaccine being distributed and we sense an easing of the fear that has been pressing upon our lives. We thank you that you have given us minds that can reason and find cures, that can administer and organize. As in the past, you have been our hope and strength. You are truly our rock and our salvation. We know that you will never leave us or forsake us. Therefore, we ask that you would continue to guide the scientists and researchers, grant them insight into the nature that you have created, and thus better enable them to serve and protect us all. And finally, Father, grant a permanent remedy to this disease, and with it a return to normalcy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. There do continue to be around us those, however, Lord, that are ill or otherwise are hurting in body, mind, and spirit. Therefore, following after your command and in love for them all, we lift before you those who are ill in our midst. Especially, we pray this morning for Myrtle Sanderson, Stephen Carper, Lois Vance, Larry Tannis, Shirley Zweig, Patricia Zach Hofford, Nancy Connor, Allison Connor, Marsha Biang, Sheila Lilly, Shirley Stickney, Jeff Marta, Laura Shukstra, Joanne Pert, Wilma Peliquin, Tony Fontana, Ed Smith, Rachel and Steve Grigo, Marie Villarreal, Porter Goggins, Tim Smith, Bree Page, together with all those who we hold in our hearts. Restore them to their health and vitality with your divine healing. Calm their troubled minds with your assurance and soothe their spirits with your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord Jesus, be with those who continue to struggle with issues in their lives, including issues of health and wholeness. This morning we pray for Treva Hensley, Jim Prentice, Kathy Taylor, Betty Johnson, Richard Johnson, Karen Teague, Christy Green, Bill Casper, Frank Deptola, Jim Lowry, Margaret Strick, Ken Strick, Denise Wyrick, Carrie Togia, Linda Blakesley, Adeline Scott, Terry Freidom, Jennifer Hoots, Kate Andrews, Julie Molesky, Catherine Kensman, Carlos Page, and all those we name in our hearts before you. We ask that you would bring healing to them and lead them by your spirit to find hope and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember, dear Lord, those who have recently lost loved ones. We think of the passing of Michael Bloomberg, husband of Patty and son-in-law of Eunice Dexter. Draw near to them and comfort them by your Holy Spirit at this, their time of loss and grief. Mend their broken hearts, give them solace, and in your healing, lead them forward in your strength and with renewed assurance found in the promise of the resurrection for all who place their faith in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are grateful, Lord God, for the way you have called us all to be your children. This morning we welcome new members into St. John's Orange and into our church family by confirmation, transfer, reaffirmation of faith, and by holy baptism. 
We ask that you would be active in their lives, keeping them safe from harm, and always growing into a greater understanding of you, your love for them, and of your plan for their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are grateful, Lord, that you have given gifts to each of us and that you have made a place for each of us in your kingdom where we may use those gifts on behalf of others. Today, we lift before you those involved in our outreach ministry. As our footprint in the community continues to grow with greater food distributions and our continuing relationship with Olive Crest and foster care agencies in the county, we pray that you would guide those directing this ministry Bless those undertaking this work, that their efforts would truly make a difference in the lives of those they seek to serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. And now into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's focus our hearts on today's offering. We thank you for your partnership in spreading the good news of Jesus and God's good work through St. John's Orange. Your gifts of any amount today add up and provide tons of different ways for people just like you to experience the life-giving hope found in Jesus. When we give and sow into what God is doing here at St. John's, we not only help to provide ways for people to learn about the love of God, we also help to fund and to be the actual hands and feet of Jesus bringing physical help to people in need. Every gift given today makes a spiritual or tangible gift in the lives of others. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, we come with thankful hearts today, thankful that at some point someone was willing to be the one to sow into this church with their finances so that each of us could reap the benefits of what you provide for your people through this place. Lord, thank you for making a way in the wilderness and providing streams in the desert for us, for your people. Help us to trust you with all that we have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.
Please join me as our service closes in prayer and with God's, God's blessing. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.